This is protein. Now when it comes to putting on muscle mass, it's universally known that every forum or general lifting advice will tell you that one gram of protein per pound body weight is the gold standard of intake for protein. But what if this is too much protein? With countless recommendations on how much protein you should be eating, if one gram of protein per pound body weight is in excess, the following question should be, is the protein being wasted? And more importantly, is it dangerous? First, we have to understand that protein is made up of a combination of 20 amino acids. Some amino acids cannot be produced by the body. These are nine essential amino acids. Of the nine essential amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, and valine are the main drivers for building muscle mass. One way to see if protein quality is high or low is based on the amino acid profile. The digestibility of indispensable amino acid score, dia score, is a percentage rating that is based on the small intestine's digestibility values of each individual amino acid. Now taking a couple steps back, if you're sitting here thinking, why am I even learning this? Well, it's very important to understand that protein has many roles in the body other than just building muscle mass. Now because we are a fitness page, we are very concerned with building muscle mass, and we need to know the die-hard question of all, will eating too much protein be wasted? So we need to understand that muscle mass is created from an adaptive response from training, either from sarcoplasmic or myofibrillar hypertrophy, to increase in muscle size and even strength. Now in this process, you may have heard of the anabolic window. An old school thought that if you ate protein, carbs, 30 minutes after working out, you'll be maximizing all the gains, and if you miss it, you're hindering your muscle progression. It's hard to blame Arnold and fellow old school bodybuilders because lucky today we could skip through all that misinformation because there's something called the internet. Readdressing the anabolic window, exercise is said to elevate MPS up to 24 hours or longer and that realistically when you eat protein, MPS increases for about 3-6 to six hours. Per meal, protein is best at 40 grams of protein in terms of the MPS response and anything after 40 grams of protein does not show much difference. Imagine what would happen if you ate 200 gram steak, which contained 60 grams, 50, 60 grams of protein. You would just have massive diarrhea every time ate past that threshold. It may not constitute for all your muscle mass gains for MPS response, but as stated earlier, you definitely need protein for other functions in your body. And I absolutely understand that this video might open up a bunch of wormhole questions of what if this, what if that, which is why I recommend you to use the internet, but also understanding how to interpret quality information with research behind it versus loosely said information based on experiences. Okay, so now let's interview fellow gym mates and see what their actual protein intakes are and what they believe is the best amount of protein per meal and uh, what type of training they go for inside the gym. Today I'm with Andrew. Jess. Rachel. How much protein should you have per day? 0.8 grams per pound of body weight is like the magic number. About 1 gram per pound of body weight. 1.5? 1 1.5 uh, 1 grams per pound of body weight? How much protein do you intake per meal? 50 G. 40 grams. So I try and 30 grams? What do you train for inside the gym? So it was bodybuilding that kind of turned into powerlifting, so right now it's kind of a mash between the two. Mostly strength, but also like obviously aesthetics a bit. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, lifestyle, like just for me. So like hypertrophy? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Hyper uh, hypertrophy and yeah, that's pretty much it. Who is the most accurate? A. Andrew, B. Rachel, or C. Jess? C. Jess. Protein intake definitely matters when it comes to your type of training. Commonly known that 0.82 grams per pound body weight of protein intake isn't a horrible protein intake, but as a lifter who cares about their strength, there's been some research studies showing that higher end protein intake may be beneficial for those who are interested in strength training. Now say you're not into powerlifting, not into strength training, protein intakes of 1.6 grams per kg body weight of fat-free mass is totally acceptable for muscle progression while training weights. So great, eating more protein may be beneficial. There's still one question on your mind. Is eating a high protein diet safe? If you have healthy kidneys, eating an abundance of protein shows to be safe. And instead of worrying about your protein intake, worry about the quality of proteins that you're consuming. The whole thing has 110 grams of protein. There's also these core powers, but this is 42 grams of protein. In Alex's defense, he did not preface his video by saying it was healthy. Personally for myself, I will not consume these foods willingly because I know the risk. Make smart choices with what you're eating. I stick to chicken breast, tilapia, trout, along with Greek yogurt and some dairy products for some protein. While it's definitely not a high risk diet, there's definitely still some risk, but these are costs I'm willing to accept if God forbid anything happens. Okay, so who better to ask about risk and diet than fellow gym goer Tristan Lee. So if you guys don't know, Tristan, 
has a very fascinating diet where he follows a carnivore diet. diet. Yep. I guess we'll just ask him maybe why he chooses to follow a carnivore diet and what are some risks that come along with a carnivore diet. I've been doing it for such a long time. I started when I was 13, 14 years old doing low carb, keto, ketogenic initially for soccer. So I was doing it for more endurance purposes and I saw the benefits in using fat as fuel rather than carbohydrates. And then I just carried that through into my weightlifting, fitness, bodybuilding, obviously with social media, staying lean is, is ideal, so it's allowed me to do so. And I've just found that it's something that allows me to have mental clarity throughout my day. Whatever diet that you're doing, make sure you're doing your research into it. One major thing with a carnivore diet is that a lot of people will under eat when they start because protein's so satiating. Some people have issues with having too many organ meats. If you have too much organ meats, you can have hypervitaminosis. And um, when you're on a carnivore diet, your need, your requirements for those vitamins actually goes down so you don't require quite as much. Okay, last question. How much protein do you eat per day, if you to estimate? And what are your thoughts on people being worried about over consuming protein. I have not had any kidney issues at all and I consume upwards of 200 and all the way up to 250 grams of protein per day and I only weigh 150 pounds so that's like that's up there as far as as far as uh, protein intake would go. You know, a lot of people say one gram per pound of lean body mass. There's not much research that shows there's risk with high intakes of protein. You're not gonna get extreme amounts of benefits of over consuming the protein, but there's not many risks associated with consuming that much. So not everyone has to have the same protein intake, assuming they're reaching their minimum intake of 1.6 grams per kg of lean body mass. Limited studies show that more protein might be beneficial for strength training. As Tristan stated, if you don't feel better with a high protein diet, listen to your body and go with what feels best. That's pretty much the video. Special thanks to Tristan Lee for being a part of my video. Like, subscribe, comment below, and stay tuned for Tristan's channel as a banger collab is coming very soon. Uh, if I didn't have no mobiles, I'd be menacing.